Hey guys, so today in this video I'm going to be explaining a tutorial on how to draw a baseball player in a comic book style. And also if you're interested in picking up like a t-shirt or a phone case or a poster or other merch like that with this image on it, just click the link in the description below. That's a good way to support this channel and help me uh, produce more videos like this. So without any further ado, we'll get into the video. So the first thing I always do before starting a drawing is I do a quick thumbnail sketch. And as you can see, the reference photo I have here of Aaron Judge from the New York Yankees. It's real quick and basic, just to make sure that this image is gonna work well on a drawing. So you don't have to spend too much time on that, but that's the thumbnail. Now the first step that I'm doing is I'm sketching out the drawing. And basically you're gonna start really loosely at first, and you're just gonna try and get all the basic elements down on the page just to make sure they're all gonna fit. You know, his, from his head to his whole torso and his arms, make sure everything fits on the page so that nothing uh, is going off the page is what you do first. And then after that, you start to fill in the details, you know, especially you're gonna start with his face and his hands. Those are the details you're gonna wanna fill in first. Make sure you get those down right. And then move out from there onto uh, the details that matter less. Obviously the face and the hands uh, in, in any drawing uh, of a person are probably the most important things that you want to get right. Those are the most expressive things. So definitely want to get those right and make sure you've got all that. And then just make sure you've got everything laid out on the page. Um, you know, you're doing this with a pencil, of course. So that way you can erase if you make any mistakes and, and make corrections. So that's why you start with a pencil first. That way you can erase if you make any mistakes. And it's just a good way to get everything down on the paper and make sure you got all laid out to start. Next, I'm gonna be doing the outlines and basically I'm just taking a, a real thin pen, a micron pen here, and I'm just outlining on the pencil drawing and just drawing, you know, like I said, a, a thin outline of where the final shapes are gonna be. And this is how you transfer the pencil drawing into an ink drawing. You start with these outlines and you wanna, you wanna make them as thin as possible and put down as few lines as possible. That way you can always change things later in the future, uh, just in case there was an issue with your pencil drawing. But you know, once you put something down, it is final. You can't erase a pen. So like I said, put down as few lines as possible and as thin as possible. That gives you the, the maximum amount of ability to change things in the future. Now the next step after that is adding the line weights. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm taking my uh, my inking pen that I have and I have one that has a really thick tip. It's got two tips to it, a thin tip and a thick tip. And I'm taking the thick tip and I'm using that to basically just outline all of the, uh, the most basic shapes. And the purpose of this style, um, you know, it's comic book style, but my style, uh, it weighs heavily on outlines as opposed to shading with a pen. So um, so basically the way I create depth is through varying the different line thicknesses. So I'm using a, a really thick line, a really bold line, in order to, uh, to outline the most basic shapes, you know, his head, his helmet, his hands. And that sort of makes these shapes pop and makes them stand out from the background that's behind them. And then after that, I'll come in with this medium thickness pen that I have. And next I'll do the next thickness of shapes, um, shapes that are kind of not, not as well defined as the really thick ones, things that are just, you know, kind of medium, um, like his fingers, how his fingers don't stand out from the other fingers as much as his, how his hand stands out um, from his torso behind him. So I'll come in here with this medium thickness pen, you know, I'll do the wrinkles, I'll do um, his muscles and, and the, the definition of all the muscles in his arm. And I'll basically just go throughout the whole uh, image, adding in um, adding in the, the inking here, where I think that I need to add in lines that are just a medium thickness. And then after that, I'll come in with the really thi the thinnest uh, pen that I have and I'll just go through the really delicate shapes, like adding, you know, his knuckles, um, adding like stitching lines on the uniform, just whatever is, you know, a really thin shape that just needs to stand out from its surroundings um, very subtly. And I go throughout the whole image, you know, his belt, 
um, his helmet, things like that. And then after that, I'm coming back around to um, with a thick uh, pen again, and I'm basically doing an outline um, around everything, the whole drawing. And again, this kind of makes the drawing stand out from the background. And you know, the whole point of this style is that I'm using a line variation and thick, you know, the, the variation and the thickness of each line to uh, create depth, to create emphasis on certain shapes and make certain certain shapes, certain body parts stand out from the rest of the drawing. And this is a style that I've kind of cultivated over the past couple of years on this channel. And then lastly, after that, I'm just doing a little bit of shading work very subtly, just a few shadows here and there, nothing too crazy. Um, you know, many comic book styles, they'll use inking to color in, you know, half, if someone's face is in shadow, half their face will just be completely black. That's not really the style I'm going for here. Um, so I'm using the, uh, the pen to fill in shadows, but very subtle, you know, the shadow, um, right under his chin on his neck, the shadow that his hands create, the shadows, um, on the inside of his uniform, uh, and inside of his sleeve. But these are just, like I said, they're real subtle, uh, nothing too dramatic. All right, so now we get into one of the fun parts, adding the color. So the way the, the colors work for the markers is each color, I've chosen uh, three different shades of it. So his skin tone, uh, the blue on his helmet, uh, his, the grays for his jersey. I've chosen three shades of each color. And the first thing I'm doing is adding just a base coat over everything. So for his skin, I'm just, uh, of the three colors that I've got picked out, I take the lightest one and I just do a, a base coat over all of his, the areas that have his skin. And then after that, I do a base coat with the lightest blue over all the areas that are gonna be blue, like his helmet, his arm guard, his belt. Uh, same with the bat, you know, a base layer of the lightest black over the bat. And then same with uh, the white for his gloves and his uniform. And now the gloves and the uniform, uh, technically the, the lightest thing would be the white of the page. So I'm not gonna color in everything with this gray. I'm basically just gonna color in, uh, you know, the medium shadows and leave the highlights uh, unco uncolored, leave the white of the page be the absolute highlights for that. But um, I'm coloring in the rest of the shadows with, uh, with this light gray that I've got. And you know, if you notice, uh, this is the Yankees home jersey and I have not drawn the pinstripes yet and that's on purpose. Um, I'm gonna draw the pinstripes last. Uh, the reason for this is if, if I draw the pinstripes and then start coloring over them with this gray for shadows, then it's probably gonna make the pinstripes bleed a little bit and it's just not gonna look very good having all these uh, these thin lines bleeding all over the place. So that's why I'm intentionally drawing the pinstripes last. So next, after the color base, I'm gonna get into the backlighting with the colors. Now, basically what this means is I'm gonna take the medium tone for each color and I'm gonna color in the whole area, except I'm gonna leave a backlight uh, where the, the lightest color can show through around the outer edge of everything. So as you can see on the helmet here, I've got a, a hole in the, the dark color or in the medium color for where there's a shiny spot on his helmet, but I've also got, I didn't color in the edges where the lightest tone is so that it, it creates a nice highlight. And I'm basically doing this with everything that I color in with his belt, with his arm brace, I'm leaving an area untouched where the lightest color can show through. Now next I'm gonna do the shadows. So basically I'm gonna take the next darkest tone of each color and I'm gonna color in where the shadow areas are. So for a skin tone, I'm taking a, a medium brown color and I'm coloring in wherever there's shadows, you know, under the bill of his hat, uh, you know, around his nose, under his, his jaw and on his neck and stuff. And then same with on his arms, you know, wherever there's a shadow cast by his muscles. I'm gonna be filling all those in and basically that adds depth to the image. And then with the other colors, you know, with the blue, with, uh, with the grays, I'm gonna be basically adding uh, more shadows, you know, taking the, the darkest tone of each color, like the darkest blue, the darkest gray, and just coloring in wherever there's a shadow 
uh, wherever you know it gets darker than the base layer and darker than than the medium tone. Um, you know, I'm just gonna be adding shadows, so it's pretty self-explanatory. You know, you just look at your reference image and or just go off based, you know, whatever you feel like, whatever you think it would look good, and you just add it in the darkest shadows uh, with your darkest color there. So pretty straightforward. And then lastly here, I'm adding in the pinstripes. And like I said, I'm doing these last because I don't want the pinstripes to bleed if I color on top of them with the markers. And as you can see here, I'm trying to uh, follow the curve of his body parts, you know, where his shoulder or his arm curves around. And, but I'm also adding in like the wrinkles. So one of the beauties of these pinstripes uh, for a baseball jersey is that you know you can really get a full the full depth of his body uh, by drawing the pinstripes, drawing them curve around all the shapes you know of his arms and his torso, and then also you can show the wrinkles through them. So it's uh, you know normally I draw football players, but drawing these pinstripes uh, it's an added bonus that I think really I really like and really makes the image pop. So here's the final image in all its glory. Let me know in the comments section what you think about this image, how it turned out. If you enjoyed this tutorial, leave a comment as well. Let me know uh, that that benefited you. And like I said, check out a link in the description if you wanna get an image like this on a t-shirt or other merch that you want. And definitely subscribe to this channel and I'll see you again in the next video.